Okay, so um, good evening and welcome to like a sort of special Boss Constructor development stream. Today's stream is not about Boss Constructor at all, but rather we will be taking a look at libgdx, which is a pretty, pretty good and pretty up-to-date um, development platform to make video games based on Java, which can target, you know, desktop like Linux, Windows, Mac, Android, Blackberry, iOS, HTML5, all sort of stuff and all sort of goodness. And from what I can tell, it's pretty promising and it's pretty well developed and pretty well updated. So I'm going to take a look and um, I'm pretty much starting from, um, from zero here because I haven't really had any previous experience with it. But um, I guess we can just go along and um, if you want to, you know, have a look at it, please feel free to join me. And um, yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so first let's make a brief agenda for what we will do in this stream. So first we're going to um, install the software which we need, which is um, Eclipse as the standard development um, platform. Then we will install libgdx and well, basically we will compile our first, you know, create our first, first test project and we will build and test our project and well I guess uh, when we've got gotten to that point we can see what we do next. Okay, so just if you're wondering, I'm doing this on Linux, but um, you can do pretty much the same on Windows or Mac as well, depending, um, yeah. So the details on how I install stuff will differ on your system, but um, the base capabilities and stuff for the platform will be the same. Okay, so I will start by um, installing Eclipse because I do not have it installed yet. So I'm going to do that using um, Pacman. Okay, good. Hello, Fustrand. Good evening. So for me, it's sort of evening, um, being in Germany. Local time is like 8 p.m., I think. Yeah, it's 8 p.m. Okay, um, while this is installing, I can also download libgdx from this site. So basically you google lib libgdx or go to libgdx.badlogicgames.com. Go to download, go to download setup app, I think, yeah, okay. So we keep it. Okay, and we have gdx setup.jar downloaded. Okay, so Eclipse is almost finished downloading. Mm. <laughs> While this is happening, we can already make like a little test project for it. Um, so I'm going to make new directory for gdx. Um, it's probably not like the best place to put it here in my project directory, but um, for now it will do. Okay, so what was it called? GDX setup dot Okay. So we have our gdx setup.jar set up in our directory and Eclipse is done installing. So that is pretty much done. Um, so as far as I know, it is not entirely necessary to use Eclipse for this um, libgdx, but um, to be honest, I'm not quite sure yet how to compile it without Eclipse. But maybe this is something we can figure out later on. So I'm going to put this in our agenda. Let's figure out how to build it 
you know, from console or from from scratch, so to say. Okay, so as far as I can tell, um, now that we have this um, GDX setup .jar, let me make this a bit louder for you. Um, I pretty much execute it and it will take me to sort of like a setup program. Okay, so let's do it. Um, you do need to have Java installed for this to work, obviously. So Java minus jar, GDX setup jar. Okay. Okay. Libgdx project setup. Ah, I guess it's a bit hard to see on stream because I have it a little downscaled. Um, so basically we have name, package, game class, destination, Android SDK. Okay. So, okay, let's call it, um, First test um, package is I don't know EMS first test I guess game class well let's also call it first class first test in order not to get confused later on um, destination libgdx test let's call that first test as well and Android SDK. Um, well, I do not have the Android SDK installed at the moment, but depending on how far we get today, we can, um, I guess, test it later on. So test deployment on Android. Um, I do have an Android phone here. I do not have an iOS phone, so we'll see about that. Okay, so here we can choose the libgdx version. Um, I'm really sorry, by the way, that this is a bit small on your on the stream probably, um, but um, I will adjust the font size later on. Okay, so here we can choose the libgdx version. There is only one option at the moment. And we can choose different sub-projects. So we have desktop, Android, iOS, HTML. Okay, so for now, um, I will just start using desktop. We will see about the other ones later on, I guess. And we have several extensions. So we have bullet, which I think is a three-dimensional physics engine. Um, we have free type, which is used to render fonts, like two type fonts. We have tools. I have no idea what it is. But I guess let's use tools. Um, controllers, controller gamepad API, okay. We have Box2D, which is a two-dimensional physics engine. Box2D lights, Ashley, and AI, artificial intelligence framework. Um, I should say that, that I sort of know what controllers does and I have used Box2D in um, Boss Constructor. Um, I do not know about the others, so um, yeah, so let's take it one step at a time. So I'm going to install the tools and the controllers. And well, I guess let's generate it and see what happens. Ah, okay, thank you. Good to know that it's readable, sort of. <laughs> Um, test deployment on Android, maybe. Well, I guess we can test all this stuff, like test free type, um, test AI stuff. But um, this is pretty optimistic for me to write all this down because I have no idea how far we will get. Okay. So basically, it has built something um, to import in Eclipse, file import, okay, Int IntelliJ, idea, and NetBeans. 
So we have like ready-made products for the main platforms, the main Java development platforms. And um, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to close the project generator. And um, before we open it, let's just have a look at what it has done. So projects, libgdx, first test. Okay, yeah. And this is sort of what I feared. There's a whole lot of stuff and I'm not entirely sure what is actually required. So we have core assets, okay, source, okay. So as far as I know, we have this one project, which is called Core, which is the same for all the platforms we target. And then we have this desktop project, which is only used when we deploy to desktop. So I'm assuming that if we had like Android and stuff, we would have an additional Android project here. Okay, and I think Gradle is the the build tool which is used to build and deploy projects done using libgdx. As far as I know, it's, you know, from co concept-wise, it's like Ant or Maven, both of which I haven't really used before. So it's going to be fun. Okay, so I'm going to start Eclipse now, now that it has finished installing. asking me for a place to put its workspace. So I'm going to put it in my project directory. And off we go. Okay, so um, I have used Eclipse before, but it's quite a long time since I've used it. So it may be, may be a bit rough around the edges. Okay. Um, and also, this theme is sort of strange. <laughs> um, I'll see about it in a second. Okay. So, um, libgdx has told us to make a new project and to um, I guess not this one. Open file. Mm, no. Ava. Uh, no. Hi, Tommy. Good evening. Um. So what I'm looking for is project from existing source. Um. Project, I guess. Okay, project. Project is good. Or is it? Um, I think I'm doing this wrong. Okay, import maybe. Import. Okay, import. Existing project into workspace. Okay. So let's select the directory. libgdx, first test. Okay, and no projects are found to import. Mm, okay, maybe it's not this one. But basically, it, that's what it told me, right? Hmm. This is annoying. So what else can I do? Can I go to core? No projects are found to import. Or here maybe? Nope. Oh great, so first step and we're already getting stuck. <laughs> uh, search for nested projects? Nope. Copy projects into workspace. Okay, I cannot really continue here. Okay, so let's try again. Maybe was the wrong option. Existing project into workspace. What else do we have? I, d 
don't really get it. Um, root directory would be this one. But it tells me no projects are found to import. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to build it again. I'm not really sure what went wrong here. Um, but um, let's just remove our first test and generate it again. So maybe I missed an option here too. And do it properly. enough this project generator takes more time to load than Eclipse um, okay so basically I'm going to do the same as I did previously um, first test first test um, first test um, Okay, so let's go to advanced. Maybe I missed something. Ah, okay. Generate project Eclipse project files. Okay, yeah, that explains it. So it doesn't um, it doesn't do this by default. You have to explicitly specify it. Okay, good. Yeah, that should solve that. Okay. Generated. Uh, I should say by the way, install Eclipse is done. Install Eclipse is also done. So nice. Okay. Um, I guess I can leave this project setup open and just go back to Eclipse. So let's try again. Import existing projects into workspace. Root directory is the same as previously. Um, okay, and now it works. So now it's showing me two projects. Mm, search for nested projects, copy project into workspace. Well, I guess it should work like this. Okay. Okay, nice. Okay, <laughs> I really need to fix the theme here. This is <laughs> it's like the worst possible theme ever. I guess it isn't really working too well together with my um, my desktop settings here. Okay, so general appearance, theme classic, um, dark, well, I guess dark is nice, GTK is not working, high contrast, okay, I sort of like dark, let's apply it, color and font theme, classic theme, default is okay, um, and I would like to increase the font size, text font, edit default, edit, no space, okay, and I also like this font, so Okay, much better, except that some stuff is drawn in black. Oh god, why? Why? <laughs> I don't even know. Um, I have no idea why actually. I mean, this is the dark theme. High contrast is not, not useful. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so basically, selecting the same stuff, now it works. I don't even want to know. Good. Okay. So let's go through what is happening here and um, what has been created. So first of all, I'm going to rearrange this stuff a bit. And yeah, good, good. Okay, so basically we have two projects here. We have our core project, which is, um, which is the game or application itself. And we have our first test desktop, which is pretty much the launcher for our application which will contain um, like platform specific stuff. Um, wait a second, I'm just going to reload this. So for some reason my Twitch stream is sort of odd. Is the stream still running for you? Very strange. I mean, it is uploading to Twitch, but um, I cannot really watch anything on Twitch. Is it just this one? Okay. Um, it's fine for you. Okay, good to know. So. Um, it is just not working for me. Wait a second. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I can upload to Twitch, but I cannot watch it. Well, whatever. Good. So, let's continue. So, before we continue any further, let's just have a look at how it works. So, let's click on Run. And we have this, which is the sort of hello world application for this, I guess. Good. Okay. So, so far so good. Let's close it and let's sort of analyze how it works. So, we have this first test, extending application adapter. Okay. We have a sprite batch and a texture. And we have two functions, which is create and render. And the create function is creating a sprite batch. I'm not entirely sure what that does yet. And it's creating a texture, which is referencing badlogic.jpg, which is here in this assets folder. Okay, so that makes sense. And here we have our render function, where we have our standard clear, which means basically that um, black or background is drawn. So currently it is one for red and zero for green and blue, which causes this um, hideous red background, let's change it to black. And here we have our main function, which pretty much just has calls the begin function on our sprite batch and the draw function with our texture as a parameter. Okay, good, good. Good. So our first test project is working. Well, it wasn't <laughs> really much work because it's all pre-generated. But um, I guess it would be best to like have a look at the API now and see how well it is documented and if it helps us figuring out what this stuff actually does. So let's go to the where is it? libgdx homepage. 
documentation java docs okay um, what was it called sprite batch sprite batch okay draw batch scores using indices okay okay Okay, new sprite bed with a size of 1000, one buffer and the default shader, okay. Okay, and it has a lot of draw functions, which all reference textures. It has begin function, default shader, okay. Apparently it also handles shaders, which is nice. And blending, okay, okay, blending functions, nice, colors, projection matrix, okay, very nice. So, um, I'm pr assuming that this sprite that uses retained mode rendering, which means that it keeps sort of a buffer containing all the vertices which are to be drawn. And then let's the um, graphics adapter pull this data whenever it needs it, which is much more efficient than um, immediate mode rendering, which I'm using in Boss Constructor. But uh, that's another topic. So, good. Good. Okay, so next, next let's have a look at what this application adapter offers us. So, I mean, you can sort of have a look here. So we have create and render already implemented. Finalize. Okay, we have pause, which is called when the application is paused, when it is not active or not visible. Okay. Resize. Okay, so we can react to the application being resized and resume, which is probably the opposite of pause. Okay, so I guess the next question which I would have is how do we process input? So for example, when the user presses a key, how do we react to it? So, for example, if I want to move the um, move this sprite according to using my keys. Okay, so let's have a look at the API again. Graphics, DDX input. Okay. Gesture detector, remote input. Okay, I guess this is a little bit um, too um, too complex for what we need. Um, yeah, I'm basically looking for the easiest way to do it, so I can look it up in a in a book, I guess, or we can. Um, on the demos, the wiki. Uh, I should say what I really like about libgdx is that it is under a very active development. So um, I've just had a look at the um, project history and there's like a big patch every month and uh, it is really nice. So previously I've been using Slick2D, but this is sort of discontinued for two years now, which is sort of you know, it's not very promising if you start a new project doing that. I mean, I still have Boss Constructor based on it, and um, it is sort of working. I think there are a few bugs which m may not get fixed, but um, 
yeah, but I guess for a new project I would use something like libgdx. Okay, input handling. GDX input is key pressed. Okay. Okay. So let's um, try this for a start. So GDX input. Okay. Okay. So get accelerometer. Probably useful for mobile devices. SE mode, I have no idea what it is. Delta X, Delta Y, okay. Get X, get Y. The touch, touch screen device or mouse position, okay. Is key pressed, okay. Is touched. Okay, good. So for now, let's keep it simple and just use is key pressed. Key code as found in input keys. Okay, good. Good. Input keys, okay. So, okay. Let's just make it very simple and um, let's move it using our arrow keys. So I'm going to make um, X position and Y position as integers and I'm going to set them to zero initially. Okay. And um, well, basically, um, if the right key is pressed, we will increase our X position by one. And if the left key is pressed, we will decrease it by one. Okay. So obviously, this is like a really horrible way to do it because um, the speed at which it will move will depend our frame on, on the frame rate. Um, yeah, so usually you will not want to do it like this, but um, I guess as a first test it's fine. Okay, so let's give it a run. And let's press the key. Nice. Okay, very nice. So, yeah, next. Okay, so how would we do it correctly? Um, first of all, I'd make a new function. I close this input. Let's move the stuff over there. And What we also need to do is we need to calculate the, you know, the um, the frequency at which this render function is called. So we need our delta t, so to say. Um, hmm. So is there an integrated way to do it, or have we, we have to do it manually? See. So apparently we have something like this, uh, graphics dot get delta time. Okay, so let's try it. Graph 
fix. Okay. But um, what? <laughs> Interface graphics. Okay. Application. Hmm. Okay. So how do we get a graphics object? So apparently graphics has everything we need, but we need to sort of get it. Hmm. Okay. So, using this, does do we have any graphics object? Nope. Okay. So let's look it up. Um, graphics object. Okay. Buffer, sprite patch. Well, I may be on the complete wrong path here, to be honest. So, dx.graphics. Hmm. So, I'm going to give it one more try. Ah, okay, dx.graphics. Okay. Ah, nice. Okay, so I guess it, I mean, it, it like takes a little bit of time to get used to it, but um, it seems to be arranged quite nicely, actually. Okay, so I'm going to change our position to floating value. And um, our process input function will now take the delta time as a parameter. Add down here, and um, let's define the speed, which is our speed per second, I guess. So let's make it 100 pixels per second. And now we are going to increase our position not by one, but by speed times dt. And I mean, while we're at it, we can also add vertical movement. So up and down and try pause and try pause. Okay. So let's add it to our list. Um, test input methods. Okay. Um, there is one more thing I would like to try while we add input method methods, and uh, that is uh, like um, callback functions. I'm not sure how they're called correctly, but um, this is basically asking the input system every frame if a key is pressed and um, ah thank you Stella okay delta time is smoothed over multiple frames okay raw delta time okay Mention count frame and last frame in seconds. Okay. 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 Nice. Nice. Okay. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's go back to our um, our wiki and let's see how event handling works. Okay. Okay. So we design an input processor. Okay. Which makes sense. Oh, and then we just set an input processor. Oh, that's actually pretty easy. <laughs> okay, let's try it. So let's make a new class. Test input pro processor. Super class is going to be input. Input adapter, actually, yeah. Input adapter, nice. Okay. Extends input adapter. Okay. And just for the test, let's add key down. Okay. And um, down. Okay. 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 And um, I'm just going to make a very simple function, which um, you know makes a printout on the console if you hit the space bar. So we're going to um, switch over the key count. Make a case. What was it actually? It was input keys, input keys space, okay. Uh, how does it work on this is out, okay. Space pressed. Okay, good. Very nice. And now we have to add this input processor, which would probably be done here in the create function. And then, as far as I could remember, it would be gdx.input.set input processor, new test input processor. To be honest, I'm sort of surprised by how fast we are progressing here. Um, yeah, we cannot really see it here. So let's hit space three times. And we have our output. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. Okay. So, what else would I like to try? Well, I would like to try uh, texture atlases. I've read that there are um, already pre-made classes to do texture atlases. Um, I would like to test um, basic deployment. So, um, what is the sort of file structure this will generate for me. Yeah, okay. That's pretty much what I'm interested in right now. Good. Okay, text atlas. Um, so for uh, those of you who are wondering what a text atlas is, let me show you an example. I guess first of all, let me explain wh why we do it. Um, usually, if you draw a scene, you have many different textures which are in use. But um, sort of counterintuitively, changing textures is a very expensive operation. So you want to avoid changing textures 
as much as you possibly can because um, it just takes time for the CPU to change the texture. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's how it is. So, so I'm going to use the texture atlas from a boss construct for this example. Let's copy it here to our assets folder. And also copy the XML description. Okay, so I'm going to show you how it looks like. This is pretty much um, most of the textures in Boss Constructor. As you can see, they're just you know scattered around more or less randomly, um, like um, images here, um, button textures here, asteroids over here, um, icons over here. And as you can see, we also have um, normal maps mixed in. So we have both the original textures and the normal maps visible here on this texture atlas. And the second file which we have here is the atlas. Let's open it. Which is an XML description of all the textures in this atlas. So for example, um, whereas the battery PNG packed, it is at this position, it is this size, and so on. Good. Yeah, and what I'm sort of hoping is that um, libgdx will just read this stuff. And, um, you know, handle it conveniently. Okay. Um, I do have a book where it is described how this is supposed to work, but I guess we can also have a look at our wiki here. Um, let's see, Atlas, using text to atlases. Nice. I wonder why my internet is so slow. It should actually be... Yeah, I don't know, whatever. Okay, so while that part is loading, we can already check if um, it will load our texture. Yeah, and it's sort of working. So it doesn't doesn't do any scaling by default. So this is pretty much right. That's uh, it's not entirely correct. It is actually upscaled a bit, which is a bit strange. I mean, this may be related to the fact that my um, desktop manager is sort of you know pulling this window um, out to match this viewport, but um, it is definitely upscaled for some reason. Okay, whatever. Let's close it. Um, I'm using Arch Linux on this machine. Good. See the texture picker two documentation. Okay. 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 So apparently this is how it's done. Um. Yeah, I may have to generate another file to do it. Um, because um, the uh, texture packing application which I've used has many different output options. And I guess XML is not the one we need in this case. So let's have a look, texture, texture packer. Um, it's actually a really nice piece of, hard, uh, piece of software. 
Yeah, which I highly recommend. It's not free, unfortunately, but uh, it has a free demo version. So it's to slip GDX as our target project. Um, let's add a few sprites. So, for example, um, what do we have? Let's add a few asteroids. Okay. Let's add a few. I don't know. Let's add a few symbols. And add a few icons and well, whatever. Um, let's add some modules and the repair station. Okay, so as you can see, it is automatically arranging these um, textures in a way that is sort of efficient. It saves a lot of space and keeps the texture size relatively small. So in this case, um, we can actually manage to get a 2K by 2K resolution. So in case you don't know, all the textures have to be um, square and they have to have uh, powers of 2 as width and height. Um, okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so let's just um, use this as our example. Um, data file. I'm not entirely sure how I how I deploy it correctly. Um, not here. Here. Um, Atlas test. Let's give it a try. Hmm. Hmm. Um, okay. Publish, I guess. Okay. Okay. So now it should be published. Let's have a look. Okay. So now we have atlas test.png and atlas test.txt. So our PNG looks like this. And our test file looks like this. Okay. So it's not XML like the previous one. But apparently it's made to be usable by libgdx. At least I hope so. I haven't done this before, so we have to see. I should say, by the way, that um, doing text atlases manually is a real pain. So. Um, if this is already integrated in libgdx, it's a big thumbs up for me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, especially if you have um, normal maps, it's really, really painful because you have to... I think you actually have to sort of... I think I did have to sort of adapt the shader in a way that it accepts different texture coordinates for normal maps and diffuse maps, which was actually really painful. Um, yeah, and I hope I'm never going to go through that experience again. Um, yeah, okay. So let's go back to our, where is it? For example here. Yeah, and I guess let's just try to steal it and see if it works. So, we have a texture atlas. Let's put it <laughs> in my laziness 
Ja, ja, ja. Ähm, Import Text Titles, okay. Packed Images, Pack Atlas, okay, so now it should be Atlas Test. Atlas Test. Um. Wait, what? Do we do we specify an image file or do we specify a text file here? Decorative page images and a text file that describes all the images packed on the pages. Text titles reads the pack file and loads all the page images. Ah, okay, so apparently we can have multiple multiple images per text atlas. It would be really nice um, if I can trust it to actually do so. Um, just out of interest, let's have a look at the atlas txt and see if it specifies... Okay, so here in the top it actually specifies the name of the image. So apparently we don't really need that anymore. Okay, okay, so let's trust it for now. So next Atlas region, Sprite 9 patch. I have no idea, let's try Atlas region. Let's put it here in our class. I have to say Eclipse is sort of useful. <laughs> I have to admit it. I usually use like Sublime Text, which is a pure text-based um, editor, but I sort of cannot deny its usefulness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I said it. I said it now. <laughs> I hope you're happy now. I said it. Okay. Okay, so now let's see if we can get our asteroid out of this mess. So how is it called? It's called Avid Asteroid Zero. Okay, so let's disable our image texture. Okay, so I'm assuming our texture atlas constructor will read the file and will create an atlas out of it. And this call will sort of get a reference to this atlas and the specific position at which our arid asteroid can be found. Yeah, so how do we draw it? I have no idea. So first let's try if we can use... Um, this draw function. So apparently we can specify both the texture and the texture region. Um, yeah, and we have like... 500 different versions of this function. So let's try this guy. So let's use our asteroid. And um, x plus and y plus. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's sort of simple, I guess. So let's give it a try. Wow. Um, 
I honestly didn't expect it to be so simple. So a few minutes ago I started with nothing and now I have an asteroid which I can move with my cursor keys. So, excellent. I'm actually really, um, really quite um, impressed. Both by, um, you know, how helpful the documentation has been so far and by how, um, you know, how easy it was and also how flawless it was. I mean, like there's no little, you know, texture was not the correct format or you cannot use this color depth and all sort of annoying stuff which you usually get to deal with. It was really, 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 really quite nice. Okay. So I guess text atlas is, is sort of um, something which I was interested in personally because I had to implement something like this myself previously and I did not have to do it now. What I would be interested in, however, is um, how it would work if you need normal maps, if that would work as well. Hmm. Yeah, but I guess it's a bit too complex to be to be diving in right now. Okay, so instead. Let's see how deployment works. And yeah, let's see what deployment does. So I haven't done this in ages. Ah, I guess before we do it, let's um, have a look at how the project looks like here in Eclipse. Linked resources. Okay, resource builders, builders, Java builder, build path. Okay. Okay, we have a few jar files referenced. One is the GDX file and the other is, is a controller file, which probably relates to what we have done before. Ah, thank you, by the way, Stella. Yeah, I've, I've read that um, libgdx has its own texture packer, which is pretty cool. So um, I don't have really any inside information in which texture packer is better or, you know, if there's a difference at all. So this is just one I've been using so far and um, it has worked quite nice for me. But um, I mean, I'm pretty confident that the um, Included texture packer is also pretty good. Um, okay, so basically we have two jar files imported by our project. Okay, good. So let's give it a try. So export. Uh, let's try runnable jar file. Launch configuration, okay, desktop launcher, export destination. First test dot jar. Ah, extract required libraries into generated jar. Package required libraries into generated jar. We required libraries into a subfolder next to the generated jar. I guess I'm going to package them for now. Um, I have to read up on the um, exact license of libgdx if it is um, allowed to extract the stuff. I mean, I'm guessing it is, but um, yeah, something you have to check before you do something like this. Okay, so we have a compile warning. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 really impressed with the documentation so far. Okay, so here we have our first test dot jar. <laughs> it's eight megabytes big, but um, I guess it's sort of to be expected given the given the stuff. Hmm, okay, so we have um, platform specific libraries for all the operating systems. We have our uh, lightweight Java game li lightweight Java game library. Jars, JUtils, JOrbis, which is for music and sound playback, JInput, and the base GDX Jars. And here we have the assets which we created, or which were present in the default project. Okay. And here are our compiled classes. Well, does it work? I have no idea. Let's, let's, let's see. So, um, just in case you're wondering, like, if you have, if your game is complete, I mean, uh, if you want to share your game with others, you obviously do not want them to compile your project, or you do not even want to necessarily give them the source code of your project. Um, you want to give them a pre-compiled version. And this is pretty much what this jar file is. So people will still need to have Java installed, or at least um, a Java runtime environment. But um, yeah, it's working. Very nice. Very nice. Ah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's working. Um, I was just testing. So the reason why this is scaled up is in fact because of my desktop manager. So if I disable the automatic scaling, the application is actually pretty small. So I guess we can change that, but um, here it is not upscaled. So here it is actually one by one. So ob obviously for like a real game application, you would want to configure the viewport and um, upscaling and um, perspective and sort of stuff. Yeah, um, very nice, very nice, very nice. Okay, so deployment is also done. I'm really surprised by how fast we are progressing. Um, so what do we do next? Mm, I'm sort of interested to see how easy it is to make it run on Android. I'm also interested to see um, how font rendering works. So let's do this next. Good, 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 good. Um, I think we have free type Did we select it? Uh, no, I did not select it. <laughs> um, I did not select it. Um, I'm not sure if I... Hmm. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's possible to edit later on, but um, since I don't know how, let's create a new project. So. Yeah, and while we edit, we can also try the Android stuff at the same time. So in order to make it deploy an Android, we need an Android SDK, which I do not have at the moment, but which we can get. So let's close the stuff which we no longer need. Let's Google for Android SDK and download Android Studio and SDK tools. 
Ah, even better, let's see if it is in the repository. Um, actually quite a lot here. Mm. Android system image, Android support, Android SDK sources, okay. Um, Android SDK build tools. And we also have Android SDK, okay. Um, so in, in case you're wondering what this is, um, I can actually show it to you here. Um, um, Arch Linux, which is the distribution which I'm using, actually has sort of user submitted um, packages. And if I just um, go to Android SDK, to package, package search, you sort of get this list of different packages which people have compiled. And you can uh, sort it by votes and people actually up or down vote these different packages. And these are obviously already pre-made so that it runs perfectly on your system. In theory, I mean, it usually works pretty well. Um, yeah, okay. So I guess this is the one we need, Android minus SDK. So let's install it. So using, using like this package manager, we do not really have to worry about um, you know, which version we need and which, you know, dependencies we have to resolve and stuff, so. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised that we have already come this far, given that we <laughs> just spent like an hour on it and we have pretty much you know, installed everything from scratch. So, very nice. Okay, so let me, let's prepare our second project. Let's call it second test. I'm not really good at naming stuff. So, second test. Second test, okay. And uh, now I'm going to activate free type so that we can have a look at that. And I'm going to activate Android. Good. So now we have this field Android SDK, which is no longer grayed out. And I guess we have to sort of specify the path to where um, our SDK and um, our Android stuff is being installed. Okay, so let me connect my phone to the computer. Hmm. Unfortunately, I have like a really short USB cable, which may be a bit, a bit awkward later on. <laughs> Installing. Um, in the meantime, um, as far as I know, you need to unlock the developer mode on your phone by um, okay, okay, good. Good, okay. Um, I'm actually not using the um, the vanilla Android, but the CyanogenMod, and I guess the CyanogenMod already has the D 
development stuff enabled. So for vanilla Android, you need to enable the developer mode by doing some obscure um, stuff, which you can find on the internet. Um, yeah, basically just as an as a, a you know, in order to prevent people to stumble upon it by accident, I guess. Okay, so it is suggesting that we also install Android UDEV and Android SDK platform tools, which we can do. Um, I'm not entirely sure if these are required, but um, I can try. Hmm. Ah, my, my connection to Twitch is really bad now, so I cannot even read the chat anymore, apparently. So... I'm trying to reload the page, but... Um, hmm. Well, I guess I shouldn't do streams on holidays <laughs> anymore, so I guess the service here in Germany are not the best. Well, anyway, the stuff is now installed. I'm not entirely sure where it is installed. This is what we'll have to figure out next. Um, and ADB, okay. Um, yeah, actually, how do I figure out where it is? Uh, let's try locate. Uh, lip, Qt, share. Locate the truck. Pearl Android. Where is it? <laughs> um, here's the lip. I mean, I can probably look it up, so... So, let's give it a look here. Okay. Just want to figure out where the stuff is installed. User share pics maps, user share applications. Opt, package name, platforms, okay, opt Android SDK tools, okay, good, that's where it is, I guess, yeah, okay, opt Android SDK, okay, here it is, I guess, so let's try to use that folder, let's browse to it. Um, opt and run SDK. Hmm. And let's try this one and generate. Okay, you have no build tools. Hmm. Update your Android SDK with build tools version. Okay. So either I have installed the wrong version or I have um, used the wrong path. 
So first, let's try a different path. Um, tools and lip. Uh, no. Platforms. Nope. Tools. Add-ons. Ah. Um. Um. Is it possible that it doesn't download the the um, SDK directly, but that it rather lets you, you know, gives it an application it downloads it? Installing the SDK, adding SDK packages, SDK manager, okay. Okay, SDK manager. Okay, so I guess that is what we need. But where is it? <laughs> I'm really sorry, by the way, the um, Twitch homepage isn't working at all for me at the moment. So unfortunately I cannot read chat, which is really, I'm really sorry about. So uh, I'm sort of assuming that you've already told the answer like five times in chat, but I'm just, um, I'm just not sure how to do it. Mm. Navigate to tools, then execute Android SDK, okay. Android SDK. Ah, okay. Okay. Okay, so apparently it is loading something from the internet. Presumably. Um, I have no idea what's happening to my internet. It's really, really quite disturbing actually. But it's not even just the. It's not even just Twitch anymore. Hmm. Hmm. I'm really sorry, guys. Um, I have no idea why. Everything is so slow at the moment. Um, okay, so, um, you know what? I'm going to make a very brief break. I'm going to restart my router, which will hopefully resolve these issues. And um, I'll see you guys again in about like five to ten minutes. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>